Hey everyone and welcome back to another Bisect Hosting server tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to go over the Bisect Hosting premium panel and go over all of the features that you will receive when buying a premium Bisect Hosting server. This guide will go over all of the general features that you will see when you log into your premium Bisect Hosting panel. But if you have specific questions, you can always create a ticket and ask our support staff and they'd be happy to help. First, to log into our Bisect Hosting Premium panel, we can either go to premium.bisecthosting.com or from Bisect Hosting's homepage, we can choose Panels and select Premium Minecraft. Here we'll be prompted to log in. To log in, you must use your username and password. You can find this info in the email sent to you when you purchase the account. We suggest when you log in for the first time to go to the profile page and change your password to something that you will be able to remember, but is hard to guess. And once you're logged in, you will be greeted with this front page. On the left-hand side, you will see all of our socials, and you'll also see a tutorials button that you can click anytime you're on any page that will have videos going over each page's specific features. You can also see your servers listed here, total players online from all of your servers, total unique players that you've had join your server, You'll see latest updates, and this is latest updates for the Bisect Hosting panels. Then over on the right, you'll see Knowledge Base, which will have a list of very helpful Knowledge Base articles you can choose to learn more about specific features. And they will also have video tutorials going over a few things down below. On any page in the Premium panel, you will see this up here, which you can switch from Dark Mode to Light Mode. You can log out, and you can also create a support ticket up here that will allow you to speak directly with one of our support staff. For now, we're just gonna jump into one of our servers. Here you will see on the home page various different things. First, you can see a drop down menu that you can choose any of your other servers you would like to switch to. Next, you will see where it says start, stop, restart, or kill. These are pretty self explanatory, but killing the server might cause problems. Only do this if you need to stop the server abruptly for whatever reason. Where it says currently installed, you will see which jar you have installed on your server. On the mod pack menu, this is where you can easily change your mod pack through this jar menu. You just choose a jar you would like to switch to and you can turn it on and then you can choose what to do with the files depending on what you want to do. Here, you'll see instance manager. This is where you can have different instances on your server so you can be running separate jars at any separate time. This is great for any time you might wanna switch the jar that you're currently using with friends, but you don't wanna lose any of your current progress on the server that you are currently running. Below that is our Discord button. You can just click this Discord button. It'll automatically allow you to join our Discord. Below here is the name of your server. This is just the name for yourself. This doesn't change anything publicly. You can change this to whatever you would like so you know exactly what this server is for. Below the name is your server ID. This server ID will be used with any support that you might have, especially if you have multiple different servers. This will help the support staff member know exactly what server they need to help with. Below the server ID is the UDP network. This can be either disabled or enabled, depending on what you need for your server. We then get to player slots. Ours is set to 200. This is the hard cap of number of players that are allowed to join your server at any time. If my server reached 200 players and had 200 players on it, the 201st player that tries to connect will not be able to because there is a hard limit. This is good to make sure that you don't have too many players, which might cause lag on a Minecraft server. Next, we'll show the status of the server. Ours is online and there are zero players online right now. But if you had a server that was online and had multiple players, you will see that listed here. Below the status is the IP and port. Here you can copy this and you can send this to your players so they can join the server. But there are other ways that players can join the server that we will go over a little later. Below IP is RAM. You will see we have 10 gigs on this server. And if we want any more than 10 gigs, we can choose the upgrade package button. Next, we will see our world with our world name. If we change this world name, it will create a separate world on our server and will save the current world in another folder that you can have access to. Below here is the subdomain. Here you can put any name you would like and you can have that as your subdomain. And then you can change the dropdown menu to any server suffix. So for this one, you could put bisect.modded.fun. If you put that, someone could input the bisect.modded.fun subdomain into the IP when connecting to your server, and they can use that to connect instead of the IP import. 
Below here is the Player Lands web store. You can use this to create a free web store on your server. Lastly, if you scroll a little down and you don't have it installed, you'll see server stats and you can choose which one to install it for depending on the jar you're running. And this will show you the server at a glance and how it's running at any given time. You can see it currently running here and see the RAM usage, the CPU usage, the ticks per second, loaded chunks, and loaded entities. If you make any changes on this page, make sure you choose the blue save button to save any of your progress. From our homepage, we can go to many different menus. We can open the mod pack menu, which is the same as the jar menu that we looked over earlier. We can also choose our file manager tab, which will allow us to go into any of our files. It'll also allow us to select any files that we would like to delete, that we would like to move, that we would like to create new directories for. Anything that you wanna do with your file system, you can do inside the file manager. Next, we have the console. Here we will see the console being live with exactly what's going on in the server. This is a good place to be able to check what is happening on the server immediately. You can also type commands here for anything that you would like to do on the server. You can also use the start, stop, restart, and kill commands from this page, as well as clear the log and use it full screen so you can fully tell what's going on. If you scroll down further, again, you can also see the server stats on this page. Further down, you can see server properties. This is where we can change things like allow flying, your difficulty, and game mode. Just make sure any changes on this page, you scroll down and choose the blue save button. Next is the data packs page, and you can install any of the data packs that we have listed here onto your server very easily with a click of a button. Next is the backup manager, which is a very important feature that we have for servers that allows us to restore or backup our servers from any point in time that we choose. This is very important for servers as you will want to backup often and save your work so players don't lose any progress. To configure a manual backup, you can choose one of the backup slots and hit the backup button. You can also hit the schedule button next to one of the backup slots, which you can use to schedule a backup every so often in a certain interval. We can then go to the commands tab, which has a list of all the commands that we can add to the server, and there are custom commands we can add ourselves. The next page is the scheduled task page, where we can schedule different things on our server to happen automatically so you don't have to do everything manually. Things like automatically saving the server more often or choosing to have the server restart every given amount of time is a perfect way to keep your server running smooth. Below this page is the users page that allows us to add players to our Bisect hosting panel and give them access to the files in the server and have different access depending on what you would like for each role. Next is the MySQL database. Here you can create databases and add them to your server as needed. Finally, we have our merch store at the bottom where you can buy Bisect hosting merch. If you have any questions, check out our knowledge base, bisecthosting.com slash KB or you can submit a support ticket on our website. If this guide was helpful, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more content like this, comment down below which guide you would like to see next, and we'll see you around.